Hafide Todu Hamzu. Thank you for your participation in today's virtual public hearing. This virtual public hearing is convened by the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination and Regional Affairs. For the record, in accordance with the open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders and all main media broadcasting outlets. With the first notice being issued on Monday, November 23rd, 2020, and the second notice on Sunday, November 29th, 2020. The public notice for today's briefing was also posted on the legislature's website at www.guamlegislature.org. The time is now 6.37 p.m. The virtual public hearing is now called to order. Joining me for this virtual public hearing is the Minority Leader, uh, Senator Telo Tadigui. Sorry, I'm stumbling over that. Uh, Senator Telo Tadigui, so thank you very much for taking time in your busy evening uh, to listen to these two bills. So also joining us is the Director of Department of Parks and Recreation, uh, Director Roki Alcantara, and the Deputy Director, Victor Villagomez. And I thank both of them for coming here tonight as well. I know that their uh, responsibilities with the park keep them very busy uh, as do, do their other commitments. So before we begin the discussions on the agenda, which was made available at the virtual link posted within the committee's communication provided to confirmed hearing participants, I'd like to first provide some general rules of conduct. The conduct of this virtual public hearing shall be as follows. All participants must abide by rules of conduct and quality assurance standards, including broadcasting from a quiet room with little to no interruptions. The use of virtual backgrounds is not permitted. Broadcasting from a room with adequate lighting, specifically to ensure that a participant's face is not backlit, but visible at all times when speaking. Please ensure that you are unmuted and that you are speaking clearly into your microphone. The chair will recognize individuals who have been confirmed as participants. Individuals providing oral testimony shall first be recognized by the chair before speaking and shall state their name and title for record keeping purposes. The order of questioning will begin with the panel of senators, which is a cozy number of two at this point. And each panel member will be allowed to pose one question and then be provided another round to ask any further uh, necessary questions. Oral testimonies received shall not be confined to the, excuse me, shall be confined to the substance. Okay, let me start that over. Oral testimonies received shall be confined to the substance of the, of the uh, subject at hand. Motives of any senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of this rule of conduct will, be, will result in removal for the virtual uh, meeting room by the host. I ask that all participants keep their comments or testimony to within uh, five minutes. So we almost had a completely other kind of public hearing where we weren't getting to the subject at hand at all. <laughs> um, so items for discussion at this public hearing are, First, Bill 426-35-COR, introduced by myself, Kelly Marsh Titano. It is an act to amend subsection 3115 of chapter three, title five, Guam code annotated, relative to clarifying the appointment process of the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Number two, we will then move on to bill number 295-35COR, also introduced by myself. It is an act to amend subsection 77114 of chapter 77, title 21, Guam code annotated relative to safeguarding the public recreation services fund. I will begin by introducing the first bill and then we'll call on participants to testify uh, should they desire to do so. Opening statement is that uh, over the past several years, 
There has been much confusion over the confirmation process of the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Part of this was, as was mentioned earlier, that there had not been a board in place for, I believe, six years. And uh, this caused a gap in the, uh, in the process. Now that we have a bill, in, uh, excuse me, a board in place, uh, we are coming across two conflicting pieces of legislation that have created these extra layers. The legislative intent of the bill expounds on, excuse me, expounds on two sections in law that reference the process. One part of the process requires that the director needs consent of both the governor and the legislature. We recognize that this is a peculiar step and no other agency requires both the consent of the governor and the legislature. The bill as introduced before us today removes both parties. However, for the record, please note that the committee intends to amend the bill to better reflect the process as a whole and recognize the governor's organic act authority to appoint heads of agencies and the legislature's responsibility to consent. The amended bill will amend the law to state that the governor will appoint the director upon the recommendation of the board with consent of the legislature, which is the standard process. We will now accept testimony from those who are here today. Um, I will call first upon the director if he would like to provide any testimony before I move on to uh, opening it up for questions. Uh, director Alcantara, did you want to provide any testimony tonight? Good evening, uh, Senator Kelly Marsh and Senator Kelly Titano. I mean, tight to me. Uh, the bill that uh, you introduced, uh, I, uh, I actually don't have anything to, uh, to uh, say about the bill. I mean, it's, it's by law. And so I'm glad this is being uh, rectified. Thank you. Yes, and, and really it becomes a four-step process with the two <laughs> different pieces of legislation. So the governor um, nominates and then the board ap um, appoints or approves and then it moves on to the legislature, but then it also calls for the governor's consent back again. And uh, as we mentioned, there's no other agency that we're aware of that has this additional fourth step so we just wanna bring it in line with other processes. But I will open it up to the minority leader if she has any comments or uh, questions for the director. <clears throat> um, thank you, Madam uh, Chair. Um, I really don't have any questions. I mean, it's pretty much straightforward what you said earlier, you know, trying to um, keep the board engaged. Um, but uh, you mentioned that there was an amendment to Bill 426-35. You have an amended version? Yes, um, we, we will be amending it to uh, make sure that it has all three processes, that there still is the legislative process. Um, we think that's really important given the large mandate of the Department of Parks and Recreation and you know, the many issues that we know it, it had before us. And we're very grateful that the director and the deputy director are working as hard as they are to fix those issues. But it just speaks to the need to, in my, in my view, to keep the legislature as part of this process. Um, but maybe you have some comments on the need to keep the legislature or, uh, or not. Um, I, I think it's important, um, you know, we passed a bill uh, earlier today that I felt that the legislature still needs to be part of the process. And that was the one with the University of Guam was passed. And I thought it was important, especially when you're dealing financially um, with the agencies. As you know, the legislature is holding the purse strings and it's important that we balance budget. But I think in the circumstances, it's just cut cut and dry, you know, we don't want to do anything that's inorganic, you know, uh, taking away from the governor's um, powers. 
as well as keeping intact the powers of the legislature. Um, but I do have a question. What qualifications, if any, are, are required for a person to serve the Department of Parks and Rec? Is there anything, Mr. Contra? Not that I know of, uh, Senator. Uh, okay. uh, the appointment by the governor is what, uh, what uh, the commission members are uh, voting uh, for, you know, confirmation. But as far as, uh, uh, as uh, requirements to be a director of Parks and Rec, uh, there's, none. there's yeah. none. Well, I know you're definitely qualified for the job as today reflected your unanimous support for your directorship uh, at Parks and Rec. So thank you so much for the continued hard work. And, and that's all I have for now. Thank you, Madam Spe uh, Chair. Yeah, and, and you know, I really appreciate that comment because it is such a large mandate and it, it really um, requires a lot of experience and skill and we're very fortunate uh, you were there when we went over when we had the the public hearing for the director and we had his confirmation hearing um, you know he's well versed in writing grants and uh, in managing contracts and so many things. And so, this this might be something that we we think about maybe calling upon uh, the board or um, another part of the the government to to see if it you know it, it be advisable to have some qualifications in there at least to guide the process because. I think this is something I've talked about quite a lot with people. Um, people maybe think of the parks as uh, mowing the lawn and you know refilling the toilet paper, but as I'm sure Director Alcantara can attest, the department really is so many things and requires so many skills, uh, which is why I'm really hoping to get the a park administrator back in and maybe look at uh, the idea of getting a groundskeeper back in or a grounds administrator or a cemetery administrator, something like that to really uh, provide the appropriate level of support that Director Alcantara needs to manage these many, these many things. So um, I, I do think looking at qualifications would be important to help people understand the breadth of, of skills and experience that can really make a difference in making the department successful. Did you have any thoughts on that director that you could see that that could be important to kind of put into place for the, the future, certain skills or qualifications? I, I think that's a, that's a good um, uh, gesture. Um, you know, qualification is, is, is one of the key uh, uh, for, you know, for, for, for getting, getting employment. And so, you know, being um, educated and I guess experienced as far as handling of, uh, you know, uh, contractual issues, which the park has a lot, uh, you know, uh, that would be a plus for, you know, for, for the, the future candidate of, of uh, Parks and Rec. Um, other than that, uh, you know, it's just a matter of a uh, uh, lot of uh, experience in, in handling uh, certain uh, uh, issues as far as uh, including manpower manpower issues and of course uh uh you know uh handling of of uh employees uh what do you do uh, you know you, you need to have all those uh those uh managerial background as far as uh you know uh being being involved in 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 this this uh department I think that's a, 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 a good uh, good idea. Yes, so uh, I, I appreciate your feedback. I, I think uh, more than anybody else in this room, <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're well qualified to, 
to give us some feedback on that. And I really appreciate the minority for bringing that up because um, in one way or another, I've, I've thought about this, but uh, maybe hadn't thought about it um, right here and now. But if, you know, we can continue to think about whether this would be something that we would call on the board to do or what the, what the best way to go forward with that is. Um, and as you, you mentioned, Director, that managing contracts is a large part of, of what you do. And maybe that's some of how DPR has shifted over the years. And so uh, that is something that we all know that we had an issue with earlier on with managing the pool contracts and service contracts. And so uh, that needs to be a real strong part of the skill set. So uh, I appreciate everybody for having that discussion. Is there anything else, minority leader, you want to mention before we go ahead and close this bill and move on to the next one? Okay, you're good. Okay, so with Bill 426, uh, we have an opportunity to clarify an official process set in law. This opportunity is important in providing future legislatures and administrations a clear pathway for the DPR director's confirmation process. We should take each opportunity such as this to address any ambiguities or vagueness in law or conflicts <laughs> so that our successors don't have to go back and forth on the same issues we have faced. In fact, um, we, we got legal opinions um, at least three different times just to make sure that you know, everything was uh, appropriate as we were going forward. Avoiding this saves much time and effort, and at the end of the day, makes for a more efficient process. And I ask my colleagues for their support and consideration of Bill 4 We will now move on to the second item. So it is uh, 6.53, and we will move on to the second item on the agenda. This is Bill 295 which is an act to amend subsection 77114 of chapter 77, title 21, Guam code annotated relative to safeguarding the public recreation services fund. As the bill sponsor, I will begin with my opening statement on the bill. Bill 295 was introduced after a meeting with the Department of Parks and Recreation after some concern was shared by the department regarding further ensuring that the Public Recreation Services Fund was safeguarded from transfers. By law, the money deposited into the fund comes from fines, um, it can come from various fees, um, but fines for perhaps violating our alcohol free zones in our parks and fees received from permit use for the parks uh, and other such other revenues that come the Department of Parks and Recreation's way. Expenditures of the fund are permitted only for the following purposes. And I think that this is important that it's been streamlined uh, in a way that helps the park do the work that it's mandated to do. It can use the fund for maintenance of the parks and recreational facilities that are under the department. It can support the purchase of supplies and equipment for maintenance. It can support the creation or continuance of community related programs and activities for the island. We do have a recreation uh, director now, or excuse me, administrator now. And so uh, this is something that he may be interested in bringing up to both the director and the board. So Bill 295 attempts to further ensure that every penny deposited into this fund remains in this fund. DPR has been consistently underfunded over the past couple of decades. Critical positions have gone vacant and necessary equipment are still lacking. This is no fault of the department uh, as it is per se, as it can only do with what it has been given. We have seen in the past that money in other funds or accounts are separate from the, the general fund were transferred by other administrations. We would like to have the peace of mind that the legislature has made it abundantly clear that monies must stay with DPR and must be used only for the purposes set out in law. 
So with that, um, I, I will again ask the director if he has any comments or testimony he would like to provide. Um, I would imagine it will be in support of keeping the money for the department. Director? Yes, uh, thank you, Senator. Um, yeah, this bill will actu uh, actually help uh, the funding that the department has been lacking. Um, I, I do support this uh, with, you know, with uh, the intent that it's, it's going to be used for, for these, you know, maintaining the parks and, and getting uh, uh, materials and, and supplies and especially equipment. You know, we, we need equipment here. Uh, so I do support this. And of course, uh, with all the, the, uh, the fees that we've been getting here in the department, like for instance, the, uh, the, the burial fee, which is $500 every burial. And we average around 10, 10 burials a week. And that's, that's roughly around what, $5,000. So, you know, uh, and also the, uh, the, uh, the rental of the pavilions, which, you know, uh, is, is about $15 for each of the pavilions down at, uh, at Ipau and, and uh, Metapeng and also over at uh, Inarahan. Uh, those uh, funds, you know, are, are, are really, uh, I mean, we, we, you know, we, we really need those funds to, to, to remain with us. That way, we don't need, really have to worry about, you know, funding issues because those are uh, a, a lot of uh, fees are coming in, especially uh, fees from from uh, from uh, sports uh, sports activities, also uh, funding from from the uh, Guam Football Federation, funding from uh, the Guam Major League and and other. Uh, softball and baseball leagues around the island that, that, that utilize the, you know, the facilities that, uh, that is under parks and rec. So definitely I, I, I do support this, this bill. Thank you. Excellent. And Sidhu's uh, Maasi for that uh, testimony and support, of course. And I was pleased to hear in the previous hearing when we were having a confirmation hearing for uh, Mr. Steffi to be a board member for DPR, that he was reminding of us of the days where um, they were able to generate revenues through uh, billboards and other things. And he said that that could bring in about $60,000 a year. So, you know, we want to make sure that those burial fees, especially because that's probably the single largest fee that is available to DPR, that the burial fees are getting there and in looking through the material, uh, through the legislation, uh, it was saying that there should be monthly financial reports that the department is doing. And it, you know, it may have been quite some time since that has been done, but it's important to have something like that so that it can be uh, verified against what the recreation fund is showing to make sure that uh, inadvertently or otherwise uh, hasn't made it in there. Because if, if there's $5,000 a week being collected, that could be a huge help. And then if there are additional revenue um, ideas that are generated uh, or brought back from the past, um, yeah, we wanna give every penny that we can to DPR uh, we had planned to have a, a fairly sizable increase to help build it back up, but our COVID-19 and state of uh, emergency and fiscal crisis uh, nipped that in the bud so that we, we stayed pretty stable. Um, so fortunately, we didn't lose too much, but we haven't been able to really build back to where we need to be. Um, so with that, I know that the minority leader was very interested in making sure that this bill happened. Uh, she's been very supportive of this measure. Uh, minority leader, do you have any questions or comments you would like to make? 
Yes, um, actually, I, I'm very interested in, in seeing, ensuring that Parks and Recs receive uh, their funding, especially from the, um, this particular fund, uh, the Public Recreation Service Fund. Um, and I, I, I do support this legislation. However, I think just for the record, uh, it might be more appropriate uh, to incorporate the same kind of language as the limited gaming fund in uh, Guam Code Annotated 115204D, uh, where it states that the monies remaining in the fund after maintaining the status reserves of administrative expenses of this act are hereby appropriated and for the purpose of the repair and construction of sports facility. Now, the next section that said is, I think is something that might be incorporated in this, which means shall continue to be deemed appropriated annually in the following manner in each physical year. So that might be more conducive to this legislation as just a um, suggestion and something to look into to strengthen the bill and, and provide what it's intended to do. Um, the second uh, question I, well, the second thing I'd like to bring up and is a question is, um, uh, Director, um, the revenues in 2020, I believe that was appropriated from the Public Recreational Service Fund was 112,707 uh, for FY 2020. How much of that was realized? The 112,000 uh, from the uh, yeah, uh, Public Recreation public Service Recreational Fund? Funds. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how much was the uh, encumbered. Uh, I, I need to look at uh, the the total amount that was was utilized. But okay. The, I, I, um, I, yeah. If we can get those yeah. numbers, I will, yeah. I will get that to you. Uh, yeah. I, I will get that to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll be important to get that number, and I can add a, a little bit of insight in their uh, minority leader. I, I think it was 112,000 that they were estimated, right, to be collecting. Uh, but because COVID hit, then parks were closed and the pavilion fees uh, were not coming in. And even the burial fees at the beginning uh, for a good amount of time were waived because we really didn't understand uh, the number of deaths that we were going to be dealing with. And so the governor in one of her executive yeah. orders, oh, I think it was in an executive order, but but she waived them. And so the last time I looked at it, I believe uh, when we were going through our budget process, it had realized 57,000 of the 112,000, but an update to that by the director uh, would be real important. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, thank you, um, Director, if I can get those numbers too as well, I appreciate it. In FY 2021, there was a um, estimated percentage projection of 116,456 uh, for FY 2021. And I think the, the realisticness of, you know, the reality of this financial situation Basically, um, I'm not quite sure if we're going to see that, but I know you guys are doing everything you can to, you know, uh, tighten your belts um, and finding austerior measures. But um, and this is going to be a very trying time, and I'm pretty sure you all know that. Um, so uh, just an FYI, you know, I wanted to bring it up about the funding part, and thank you, Madam Chair, for. Um, I mean, that's substantially half of the amount that was appropriated in FY 2020. Um, but uh, I, I hope that somehow we can find a way to um, at least get a little bit closer to what was given in 2020 to FY 2021 and find some type of relief for Parks and Rec, you know, because right now with this, with COVID-19, a lot of the individual people are going out and utilizing the parks, the park areas. I mean, it's safer to be outdoors than it is inside. And people are taking advantage of that. You can see it all along Tumon, um, uh, people walking uh, down in um, Assen, you know, going out and then people are rediscovering the outdoors. And um, 
nothing more than to go to places that are considered safe, our parks, you know, and where there's facilities that we can enjoy and take our children to and our grandchildren to. So um, there is going to be an issue, you know, um, coming up with this particular public recreation service fund, a, a, a shortage. So let's find a way, you know, um, we got Bob Steffi, I call him the money man. So let's hopefully Bob <laughs> will come in uh, and, and help provide some insight. Okay, so thank you again. Thank you, Victor. And uh, thank you, Mr. Alcantara as well. Matt, yes, and those were, those were very good points. I, I too, uh, during the budget process was very, very wary or skeptical about 116,000 when we hadn't been able to meet the 112,000. So um, I think these monthly reports are gonna be important because if it's $5,000 a week, at least at this point going in, then that, that helps us think that we might realize $116,000 if not more. And um, I do appreciate also the recommendation or suggestion for that language because we want this bill to be as strong as possible. We wanna make sure that it can be used for capital improvement or uh, other things like that. So we will definitely look at that limited gaming fund and, and the wording for that. So yeah, the verbiage. Uh, I appreciate yeah. that uh, suggestion, yes, for, for the verbiage. And I do wanna ask the director, uh, this probably occurred to the minority leader uh, as well, so we know that we're getting the burial fees in. Obviously, the pool fees uh, are, are null and void right now. But are people coming in for pavilion fees? Has that been waived or is that sort of informally? Like, what is the status of that? Uh, the pavilion fees, uh, some uh, are coming in. But, you know, because of the uh, uh, five-person uh, limit, uh, maybe one or two uh, a week uh, come in for, for a rental. And, and that's, a, that's, that's about it. And, Madam Chair, yeah. if, I, if I may, yeah. just, since, yeah. since you brought that up, um, uh, Roki, mm -hmm. I know it's the five capacity uh, that's outside of the family dwelling. But um, I guess some of those who are renting could be families who are in the same, you know, dwelling, which is more individuals. Is that what you're starting to see? I mean, it. it yes. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a lot of them are just uh, family members. Uh, yeah. There, there's not uh, uh, a rental that's with, uh, you know, different. Uh, uh, most most of it is just family, and and when they come in here to uh, to uh, get a rental, uh, we ask them what uh, you know what the purpose is for 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 uh, being there. But it's it's mostly family uh, uh, that's going to be using it. Do you, do you ask them, Roki, if it's family within the same dwelling? If there's, I'm pretty sure you give them the uh, the executive orders, um, you know, uh, mandates, right? So yes, we, we do, we do, and okay. uh, we, you know, it's hardly uh, not a lot of them come in mm. here for rental. Not like right. uh, yeah. before. I mean, maybe if they lift the uh, the requirements of yeah, over cool. five five, then we'll get get a lot. Yeah, a lot that's, of and and we're hopefully we're on that track. You know, staying underneath the car. You know, and we have two weeks to go on that. But thank you, Madam Chair. I was just thinking about that, uh, wanting to know who, who exactly is renting those right now during a time. Yes. Okay, thank you. And it's good to get assurance that um, the executive order, those mandates, you know, are being outlined or explained so that uh, people understand when they're going out there. So also, good, good point. Also, just to, uh, just to, to add to that on the, uh, the permit, that's given to them when they when they um, pay all their fees and stuff. It's also noted on the permit, um, the the executive order uh, and and stuff like that. It's all all in the permit. So that's good. that's good. Excellent. Well, it's good to hear that those kind of details are in place um, and that that speaks to the shaping up. I think of the, the department that um, 
people are working together and uh, they're each making sure that these uh, details are being taken care of. So Sajus Masi for that uh, deputy director as well. So thank you to um, the Senator, <laughs> the minority leader who provided comments and asked questions and to those who testified. Your testimony and comments will be considered by the committee. If there aren't any other comments, I will now close on the bill. Bill 295 makes it clear that we as a legislature recognize the important work the DPR must do in maintaining our parks and facilities and that we as a body also recognize that every resource and every penny it has is critical in helping DPR meet its needs and mandates. Therefore, I ask my colleagues to support this bill. The bill leaves no room for interpretation or ambiguity. The money deposited fund by law from the limited re revenue sources that the department has, which I mentioned before, should always and rightfully stay with the department. The bill at the end of the day provides DPR with this additional assurance. And I encourage uh, the director, if he hasn't done so already, to implement that, that portion of the, the law that calls for the monthly reports. Because if there is something like uh, 40 burials a month, that means that $20,000 a month uh, should be showing up in the regular services funds. And uh, that can then, I believe, be directly applied for, for equipment and other items. So we have now exhausted both items on the agenda. As a reminder, the committee will continue to receive any written comments on bills 426 and 295. Please address your written testimony to the committee on the, Her excuse me, on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatna Revitalization, Self-Determination and Regional Affairs, and submit it via email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located on the second floor of the Guam Congress building. The committee now adjourns this public hearing. The time is now uh, 7.13. Uh, thank you again, everyone, and uh, have a good evening to everyone. Thank you.